All right, welcome back to another episode here at the Laser Guys YouTube channel. Today we are going to be going through some basic light burn tools. Well, they might seem basic to some, more advanced to others. I don't know, but not everybody knows everything, right? So let's start somewhere. As you see, I've already got light burn open on my computer screen over here. Now we're just going to walk through some of these tools. So this one over here, that looks like a pencil. This one is called draw lines. Click once. And now you have a line. Hold shift and it'll move the line in increments of 45 degrees. All right. Click, 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 click. And so this stays in line until you close it. When your mouse becomes a crosshair like that, it'll close the shape. If it isn't a crosshair, the shape isn't going to be closed, as you can see. So click there. It didn't close. But if I bring it here, it closed. So it's, I'm no longer dragging a line. What if I wanted to just keep it as a line? I didn't want to close it with anything else. I just need one single line. What do I do? Draw the line. Push escape. And that's it. You've got the one line. Here's an advanced technique. Click and drag. Click. Click, drag, click, drag, click. Drag, click, drag, click, drag. So you can create curved lines. Also using Lightburn, which as a graphic designer makes things a lot easier. I mean, look at this. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Mind you, I'm not like actually drawing anything, but uh, how did you want to close it for me? Let's see. Boom. And another one. Zoom in. Uh, it's too far out there. What do you do now? Click on it with the node editing tool. Hover over the node you want to get rid of. Push D. That node was now deleted. And look at that beautiful piece of art. Let's say I want to shift it around a bit. Grab the nodes and move them. Delete them. Whatever you want to do. Push D to delete when you're hovering over the node. D, delete. You literally just grab it, click it, move it. If you want to change the shape of the circle, you can do that here as well. But don't get distracted by these things. I'm just kind of here showing you what's what, I guess. Because I don't know what you want to know. So I'm just kind of going through stuff, right? <coughs> here, the next one we've got is create rectangle so freestyle not holding anything I can make a rectangle of any shape and size that I want let's say I want it to be a square hold shift and I'm I got a square if I hold control I got a shape that's growing from the center to draw from the center hold control to draw from the corner of your selection, just select and go. The same applies with the circle. And an easy way to know whether or not you're in the center of something is to look for the crosshairs. So you see how my mouse pointer turns into a crosshair? That means I'm in the center of this drawing. If I hold control, I can draw from the center right away. So there's, it's all three, they're centered. And this is a quick center button up here. Align both vertical and horizontal centers. There's nothing to align because we drew it in the center right off the bat. And then you've got your regular polygon tool. So 
same 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 edit nodes so the polygon is a shape shapes aren't paths so if you want to edit this you have to convert to path right click on it convert to path and then now you have the nodes similar for the circles so you see the circle there are no visual nodes in the node selector go to the select tool right click convert to path edit nodes and now you've got the nodes let's say I wanted a semicircle I hover over this I push B to break over this I push B to break I grab my select tool I select the bottom half and now I have a half circle node tool click nodes now you got an egg instead of a circle all right and then here's the text tool everyone's favorite the text tool itself is kind of neat so I'm just gonna fill this with black make the height I don't know, like four inches right now just to make it more visible <coughs> So as it's selected and still in the text form, you can just kind of scroll through your fonts using your mouse wheel. I'm going to use this one. It's a welded font. Lightburn gives you the option to have it welded or leave it unwelded, all uppercase. or not bold or further italicized one question I see coming up in forums and groups all the time is how do I make an outline on this well if you're using Lightburn or any other vector based software the tool that you're looking for is called offset whether it's in Illustrator or in Inkscape, you want to offset. In Lightburn, this is what the tool looks like. You click it and it immediately pops up a window in your preview. You can offset outward, which is typically what you're trying to do, inward, or both. Your corner style can be round beveled or sharp you can choose to offset the outer shapes only or the inner shapes with it whether you want it to select the resulting objects so your new lines or not whether you want to keep the original or not and whether or not you want it to draw as you know many or as little dots as possible I like to keep this on depending on what I'm doing selecting resulting object usually and if all I want to do is uh, say create a shape for a keychain or a cake topper or something then outer shapes only round you don't want your clients to hurt themselves outward it's all you really need what did I make this this was a uh, eight inch wide already yeah that's enough do that so boom it's created your outline but I want to make it a cut line while it's still selected change the color of it now it's a cut line right click ungroup I don't particularly like this so I'm gonna delete it and then you go to your rectangle shape you draw a stake in the bottom left hand corner of the screen in my Lightburn window if you pay attention to the X Y W and H the W represents the width of the box that I'm driving drawing and the H represents the height of the box that I'm drawing so for this cake topper kind of wide I'd say maybe like three quarters of an inch and yeah six inches should be all right 
grab it. Let's try to center this. Yeah, grow it a little bit. Select them and weld. There you go. Now you've got a kick topper, but it's flat at the bottom. How do we sharpen that? Select, edit node, click M to insert a dot in the middle. Grab your dot, hold shift, pull it down, let go. Escape, escape. And here is your hello kick topper. I'm going to draw a square and I am going to draw a circle. Hold control down, I'm going to draw the circle and shift and I'm going to draw it from the center of that corner. Here we go. Back to my selection tool, select. And now let's go through these tools here. So this is your weld all selected shapes together. You saw me use this while we were creating the cake topper real quick. If I click it, it just basically welds the shapes together. This is a Boolean union of two shapes, A plus B, same thing. But A plus B is what you selected first and then second, right? A and B. A, B, this is a subtract. So because I selected the square first, that was A, it subtracted the circle from the square. Now, if I select the circle first, A, B, and subtract, it subtracts the square from the circle. And then finally, you have the intersection of the two shapes, A plus B. So A and B intersect. That's what you have left. And it would be the same the other way around in this instance, I believe. A, B, yeah, same shape. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. <coughs> and another tool in Lightburn that I particularly enjoy, especially if I'm making multiples of the same thing, is their grid array tool. Click it. X columns is exactly like it sounds. X left to right. Y rows, top to bottom, up and down. So X columns, how many columns do I want? How many items? Two, three, four, or five? Let's say I want five. Oh, but they're overlapping. The X space. You just kind of move that. You can set it to zero as I often do when it is straight lines Hold on. because it moves faster when it's cutting so let's say five I want to do five by five well, five, by, yeah, five, whatever, five by four, it doesn't matter. Zero spacing, that means that the lines are touching. You can zoom in and verify. You can change how you're spacing it. So from center to center, say you wanted to create, I don't know, like a pegboard yourself or something, and you need the holes to be one inch apart from center to center, you would then change it to center to center. Or if you're doing it from edge to edge, it's padding between edges. Reverse direction, whether or not you want it to go left or right. Shift by half is like shifting the row by half. What is this? Nope, I clicked the wrong one. Like this. So, 
that's to create you know this kind of tiled effect depending on if you're using I find this to be insanely helpful when I am nesting circles and irregular shapes because then you can just kind of bring them in and out and that's again if I'm just making a whole bunch of the same shape push OK let's say I was ready to send this off for a cut optimization settings and here's that feature that I was telling you about remove overlapping lines the distance I've never really messed with that that's a newer feature um, I'm guessing this is like the minimum distance in which you don't find the lines and consider them overlapping uh, honestly I'm not sure though and just push OK depending on how your machine cuts you might want it to choose corners you might want it to hide the backlash reduce direction changes I don't know whatever but this is how you can change the order or priority in which your cuts happen remove overlapping lines in my experience when you are doing something fairly straightforward like squares rectangles if you can get them to touch then you are using a lot less of your material you're generating less waste and it's cutting actually a lot faster because instead of having to do four for each for some it's only doing two for some it's three lines and it moves pretty quickly sometimes it, you just watch it zigzag and then it just starts chopping things out this is the radius tool so the radius tool I need to have one selected radius so because I'm working in inches here on my screen the radius is going to be what kind of radius do I want the, the, the corner so let's say I want a quarter inch radius 0.25 bring this to the corner and I click it and there you go now my corners all have a 0.25 radius a quarter inch radius these are the simple tools simple instructions just kind of a basic walkthrough here in Lightburn. These are the tools that I think you'll be using most often. Once you familiarize yourself with this set of tools, then you'll be surprised how much more you can do in this software. I hope that you guys learned something today. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please do like, subscribe, share, follow, hit that bell. And uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, always remember, Wolf Woods sucks.